and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're starting our Yak 52, very excited about it. Uh, so before we get on with our cockpit tutorial, a little bit of history about it. Presumably it's a uh, Russian trainer, Grinkle. Yep, it's the Russian primary trainer. It's been manufactured since I think the mid 70s. Roger. Uh, it's pretty much the first thing a Russian pilot will learn how to fly before moving on to things like the L39 Albatross. Roger. Super small, as you can see. Must be the smallest plane we've got now. Uh, it's got a radial engine, 360 horsepower. Um, and um, that's it, really. We can take control of the front guy, or we can take control of the rear guy. We'll have a look at both cockpits today. Uh, so I'm going to jump in the cockpit. <clears throat> so we're in the front seat now. This is where the, um, the student will be, presumably. Yep, students in the front, instructors in the back. Lovely, pretty cool, lovely sparse looking uh, cockpit, just like I like. So this is a high fidelity aircraft. There is high and low fidelity aircraft in DCS. A low fidelity example would be a flanker or an F-15C, where the uh, all of the cockpit buttons and knobs were not interactable. Uh, this is a high fidelity aircraft where everything is everything works, basically, or 99% or of everything works. You can turn all the knobs, do all the systems and stuff like that. So, uh, let's work our way around the uh, front cockpit, shall we? We're going to look left first, and let's have a little look. It's my first time, so bear with me. So, first thing, we've got a knob at the rear left. Main pneumatic system air valve. Is it something we need to do? Yep, so you'll need that open for startup, and pretty much throughout the entire flight. There's no hydraulics. Uh, it's mm. all pneumatics. There's a big air tank uh, for the compressed air, which it will use to run the starter and the flaps and all that kind of stuff. It's automatically refilled and repressurized during... Do we know why there's no hydraulics? Is it to make it cheaper? I can only assume so, yeah. I, I don't know any details much further than that, I'm afraid. Roger, master switch is, we've got the next, we've got the VHF, that's the radio, intercom for talking to the ground crew, uh, PAG if a converter, so that is an inverter circuit, something we'll need on later, landing gear, uh, what have we got here, we've got another inverter, engine instruments, radio compass, which we'll look at later, and gyro compass, presumably, yep, magnetic compass. Uh, next we've got, is this the flap sleeve next? Yep. Three Ooh. positions, up, down, and neutral. Okay, so what if I've just put it down? Okay, and neutral. Um, why has it got the neutral? Do you know? I think uh, I've said that. Yeah, the neutral is, so when you're flying with two people in, I'm not sure quite well how well it's modelled in DCS, but when you're flying with two people in real life, the student will have to set all of his controls to neutral in order for the rear controls to become active. Roger, okay, right, we've got elevated trim, lovely big old wheel, yep, I see. So, oh, we've got neutral, nose down, nose up, that's a pretty cool little meter, that's good, very good. Uh, we've got our throttle lever, on the side of the throttle lever we've got, let's have a little look. VHF radio push to talk and SPU. Oh, and the, so this is the intercom button and this is the radio push to talk. Uh, this is the thrust lever, which forwards, backwards, and forwards for the uh, for the engine uh, power. Sorry, you know what am I trying to say? What's it called? In a uh, well, you see, you got three. You've got, the, you've got the main throttle. You've got yeah. the blue one, which is the RPM for the engine, yeah. uh, the propeller pitch, and then that little one there, I believe, is the friction. throttle friction. Never, un yeah. never understood that. Yeah, but this will. Uh, it's not going to be modelled in DCS, obviously. It's how tough this this lever is to move, basically. Um, okay, that's fine. That's all standard. We've got next a main fuel uh, fuel cut off. Um, yep. So that is what it is. It just cuts the fuel off and lets it. Yeah. Burn. Okay, that's fine. Right, we're going to start on the dashboard. Uh, we're going to go up in vertical strips or something like that. So we've got lamps check test button. That is just to test all of the um, all of the lamps on the uh, dashboard, presumably. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Next, we've got what's this little chap? Magneto switch. So you've got uh, one and two, or just one, or just two, or just zero. And what's that bottom? Um, uh, I think that's just nothing. a label for yep, it. Yeah, that's fine. We've got start the starter button, and I can't see how that works. So I've opened a casing. Is there something below that casing? Yeah, the, if you you have to wiggle around with your mm. track IR, but yeah, okay. there's a button underneath that for the. That's just a safety cover for it. Roger. Uh, there are three green lights above the magnetos. So I can't see them very well at the moment. But what are they for? Are they the green lights down? Yeah, they're the they're, gear down. They're gear down. Gear down, and these are obviously the gear up three lights. There is a little knob there that's non-clickable. Then there's the main gear. So again, you've got up, down, and neutral, presumably, for the gear. Yep. Okay, we've got flappers indicators, whether they're down and up. That's all nice and logical so far. Good cockpit design. 
Indeed. Right. This next dial above mm, that interesting. is your I, is yeah is your pneumatic pressure. So that's the so one side. I can't remember if it's left side. I think left side is main and mm. right side is emergency. So that's basically the pressure in the aforementioned uh, compressed air. Right. So we've got a compressed air tank in there somewhere, and we we want to keep it at five or whatever that is uh, kilos per centimeter squared. Okay. So there's two cysts. Uh, no, sorry. There's a main and a backup. You said. And that would make yes. sense. Okay. Uh, right, stall warning check. Um, so that is to check. I'm guessing there's a stall warning then by the sounds of it. Yep. That's a, then just a uh, kind of testing button for your pre-flight and all that. Roger. Right, so we've got mark. Oh, I can do this one. Um, this is an ADF marker. This allows us to switch between um, non-directional beacons when we're coming in for a NDB landing, which we'll do at some point in this aircraft. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Gurna, uh, let's just do the top because uh, it looks pretty easy. We've got a G meter here, I'm guessing. Is that right? Top left? Yep, G meter and the traditional little button just to reset it so you can track how many Gs you pulled. Up. Yeah, so the red things are the limit, are the, you know, the max limit of the flight. The red needles, yeah, I get it. So it goes it's plus nine and minus six. Wow, who the hell can pull minus six G? <laughs> only Russians, only Russians. Uh, warning lamp, stool, max speed, metal chips. What the frig? Metal chips is... Uh, I think it's something to do with the radial engine. Again, I'm not entirely 100% sure on the engine itself. Uh, but essentially, that will light if the oil system detects metal fragments or chips or anything in there. Sweet. And it's essentially, uh, there's crap in your system. You need to sort that out. So if the, if the engine gets full of chips of metal, just like my car. Generator fault, don't want that. Max G, don't want that. Gyro warning, so if the gyro compass is out or something like that, I'm guessing. Yep, so when the gyro warning lights, you no longer can trust your gyro uh, heading. Hey, just Roger. Um, stall heat, I don't get that. Uh, that's uh, So you've got two there, stall heat and pito heat. So that is just oh, the right. heating systems yep. for the stall warning and the pito. Roger, this, is, this plane is designed for cheapness. Look, it's got non-flush rivets, I see, on the outside. Yeah. How archaic. <laughs> Another thing that's sort of interest, you see that little uh, yeah, black and marker. white stripey... Was that for the gear or something? That's the front gear uh, marker, yeah. So when that's up, the front gear is up. If you look on the left wing and the right wing, you should see two more. Hang on, is this a tail dragger? I forgot. No, no it's tricycle. Ah, thank God. I'm sick of tail draggers at the moment. Um, sorry, what's the last thing you said? There's things on the wings. Are they the flaps? Yep. Or the no, gear? So, the, so, you, so you've got the black and white stripy thing on the nose, you've got yeah. one on each wing, and they're uh, mechanical ways to tell that your gear is down. Roger. So if your lights fail. Yeah, and I see the PO tube out on the left there. Okay, beautiful. Uh, uh, just a very basic strip compass here, so we're at 030 or whatever that means. I think that's right, isn't it? Right, okay, let's go on to our steam gauge here. So, top left. Okay, we're starting speedo. So, this is hundreds of kilometers an hour IAS, would you say? Yep. Okay, so that's what that is. The percent down and left, there's some percent, but I can't work out what that is. I'm missing. That is your engine RPM. Roger, and don't exceed 100%. Understood. Down um, below, radio altitude? Below that is your manifold pressure. Manifold pressure. So it's right. like so it's just like if you remember the Spitfire, uh -huh. you've got your engine RPM and then your boost pressure or manifold pressure. So right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's going to kilos in centimeters squared. Yeah. You'll be juggling the two just to you know for your engine maintenance throughout the flight. Understood. Right down and right. We've got a chronometer. Um, so what we've we got here buttons. We've got a left knob for adjustment and a stopwatch. Uh, I don't know, I'll have to have a play with that, but two knobs to adjust things. Where's the stopwatch? Can't yep. get it working. Uh, yeah, there we uh, go. Yeah, sure. I got it, I got it, I got it. Cool, yep, for doing timings and stuff like that. ADA, artificial horizon, to tell you your attitude, whether you're pitching up, pitching down, rolling left, rolling right and whatnot, um, in case of bad visibility, or just for general use anyway. Uh, we've got an adjuster, presumably that is... Yep, and yep. A cage. Yeah, a cage on cage for when you're on the ground. Lovely. You have, you have missed one. Above the clock and below ah, the speedometer so is your altitude in me hundreds of meters. Is this barometric? Yes. Right. There is no radar altimeter in this aircraft, oh, as far as I'm aware. Roger, that's a shame. Okay, altimeter in hundreds of meters. There is our Q... Uh, it's going to be QNH or QFER. I never remember now, but yep, one of those. 
uh, for adjustment and we're going to adjust it with this knob here we can set the pressure the idea is you, you zero it to your air field so this air field we would want to zero it like thus i believe to yep. zero there so when we come back and land here we've got everything set up right otherwise we would crash Right down that list, it looks like a lovely Russian HSI, which I do like. Um, so this is a bit like a glorified compass, if you like. Um, it will use it for automatic radio direction finding. We'll use it for setting courses, like thus. And uh, we'll do it in the navigation tutorials, basically. But <clears throat> that's Indeed. that. Indeed. A quick note on the ADI. Uh, yeah. If you'll notice, it's reversed because it's... So the ground is actually above oh, and God. the Why? Uh, air is below. Um... I'm not entirely sure the reasoning below that, but it does work. So when you pull the nose up, the ball will rise, and you'll see more. You will see more blue than brown. Roger. Somewhere. But it's just something you do have to bear in mind. Roger. Okay, fine. Uh, next down below is something in degrees times 100, one up to 150 degrees, and that doesn't. Oh, coolant temperature, maybe oil temperature. That's your carburetor mixture temperature. Mm, okay. Do I care about that? I guess I do. Uh, yes. Um. Again, I'm not entirely sure why. You just need to monitor that during the fight, fl fight flight. Um, I have not run into a situation where I've mucked that up catastrophically, and it doesn't have the nice, convenient. If you look at the other temperature gauges, mm -hmm. you can see it's got nice, convenient red, <coughs> yellow, yeah. and yeah. green sections. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we go right, we've got hundreds of degrees, so this is, must be engine exhaust. Sort of uh, that's thing. the engine cylinder head temperature indicator. Engine so yeah, that's just your. The, the cylinders uh, feet from the wow, that's wow uh, oh it's because it's um, air it must be air cooled if it's a radial yes um, how interesting hmm I've never flown a radial before so this will be interesting right other in, uh, in uh, engine stuff we're going to have oil temperature is that the oil temperature at the top or coolant do you yep. reckon oil temperature at the top roger because it hasn't any coolant oh. uh, oil pressure on the right oh yep. no yeah oil pressure on the right and something pressure on the left fuel oh fuel pressure you'll need that okay fine uh, whoops, uh, we've got here um, a vertical speed gauge. Um, let me just do something because it's really annoying. There we go. Our vertical speed gauge here, so that is tens of meters per second. Yes. So, f yeah, so if we, if it's here we're going up. If it's down this way, we're going down. Also, I've got to say there is a slip gauge there, and there is a slip gauge there, and there is what looks like a turn gauge there. We'll just see when we're flying, yep. but yeah, turn gauge. Okay, down and right. Um, nothing obvious. Uh, voltimeter. Voltimeter. Your volt ampere meter. So if you. Oh, okay. The electrics. Yep. Yeah. And a button. Just so you can make sure that you're actually drawing power right. from the battery in the generator. Roger. I'm guessing going to a fuel. This looks like a ladder gauge, which they usually use for fuel. Is that a fuel gauge? Yep. Fuel gauge. Um, got some buttons here. Let me have a look. We've got a test button and an adjuster or. Indicator dimmer knob, so we can turn the dimmer up and down, which is a bit weird, but okay. Has it got fuel, two fuel tanks then? Yes. And do they left and right? Do they drain at the same time? Yes, but you will find if you do certain manoeuvres, obviously, that you'll only. So if you're really banked hard to the mm -hmm. left, you might find you're only able to drain from the right, for example. Or uh, yeah. How interesting. Okay. Right. Before we go further, let's have a look at the controls. So we've got rudder down there. Uh, do we have wheel brakes? Yes, we yep, do. That's there. the paddle on the front of your stick. Uh, as well, if you look on the front, and then if you just look at the base of that paddle, you'll see kind of a little flick switch. Yeah, that's, tat -joy. that's your wheel brake. No, that's your kind of you know your parking brake. Roger. Right, I need to set that up uh, in the binding. Uh, main stick here and a button on top, which is not pressable. Smoke. So her uh, smoke. Nice. Okay, fine. Let's continue. Uh, up and right, we've got uh, fuel priming pump handle. So like a spit, I guess you need to uh, prime the fuel into the motor. Yep, and you also need to prime it into the cylinders as well. Interesting. Okay, below that is a panel that's non-functioning. So at least at the moment of making this, there is no function to this panel here. Next, you've got what appears to be a VHF radio. radio. We'll go through this in a radio tutorial that I'll do at some point. But you're going to have volume knobs, tuning knobs. Just have a quick, ever a quick play. Uh, Indeed, yep. No, oh yeah, yeah, so change stuff there, change the frequency there, volume, and uh, and a squelch, so we'll go through that later. Next, we've got... Well, mm -hmm. The panel above it, although it's non-functional at the moment, is the ADF panel. Oh, really? 
Yes. Oh, so oh, it, it's a well, it's a, ADF... it's a control panel for lots of them. So it's got the so it's got the main ADF control. The up is on, yeah. down is off, That's and weird. stuff like that. Pressing... And it's got a different radio. I'm sure the ADF's back here, but anyway, we'll continue. Right below the radio, we've got uh, main switches again. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to read that. Battery generator, igniters, and pitot tube clock heating. Yep, we've been through all that. Next ones, I can't actually read these. Pedo heater, stool. Uh, so these are uh, main so system switches. Oil dilution switch. That's that one. So if you need to dilute the oil, if it's yeah. a particularly cold day, exactly. And then you've got the stall warning system switch. Yeah. Next up. That's all super duper. Right, uh, we've got some levers. Now these don't look familiar. What are these levers? So the white one is the radiator friction lever. So that's just like a just like your throttle friction. Okay. Uh, the red one is your oil radiator flap. So if you fiddle with that and F two, I suppose you haven't got it binded. If you can no. you F two my echo? It won't, uh, it won't show on yours. It won't show on yours because you're okay. Uh, so you've got uh, the red one, which is your oil uh, assist oil radiator to cool the oil down, and then yeah. you have the blue one, which is your engine cowling flaps. Do you ever have so to use them, or do you? Yes, yes, they are very, very important because it's air cooled. So you yeah. open that, and it lets more air into the engine. The engine mm. gets cooler. You close it, but obviously, if you open it and you open all these flaps and stuff, drag do you. increase grunt drag. Yeah, Roger. Sounds a bit like a Focke Wolf 190. Okay, let's go back a little. We've got ba -ba -ba, carburetor heat lever. Uh, okay, is that something we do? Uh, it's not something I've ever fiddled with, just put it forwards for on, I guess, or off. So, oh, I yeah. guess on a particularly cold day. You'd okay, understood. Next, we've got a big lever, emergency landing gear. Is that a thing? Would we ever have yep. to use that? Uh, if your landing gear doesn't come down for whatever reason. Again, I've not encountered a situation in flight where it's mm -hmm. ever done that, but... Ventilation heating doesn't work. Right, now I'm sure this is an ADF panel, but let me have a look. This is the... Yes, it is. So it, it's supposed to go in conjunction with that top panel. So you'd set it up in there and then turn it on on that panel. I just pointed out beforehand. Roger, okay, I'll learn that and I'll do a proper ADF video. Uh, there's something called a... No, there's some light switch control. Um, yeah, that's to that's to switch the control of the ADF system between the cockpit. Roger. And then there is a um, panel at the back that doesn't spring to mind what, obviously what it is. I'm going to guess it's to do with setting up the magnetic compass. That would be my yes, guess. Yes, it's all your directional gyros. Yeah. You've got your yeah. north-south hemisphere, directional switch. Yeah. All of that kind of stuff, you know, setting up here five degrees off because you're in the Caucasus, etc. Yeah, et cetera. I'm all over it. Right, uh, let's jump in the back seat now and see just if there's any major differences. Right, so you'll see the controls are pretty much the same, although you will be missing certain. Okay. So, yeah, the same gauges at the front, apart from we're missing some things. Same S instrument failure simulation. Ah, oh, we've got instrument failure simulation. That's interesting. So, yep, so uh, that's the primary difference between the two cockpits is the fact that you can fiddle around in there and turn things off in mic. Roger, we've got our ADF, our emergency gear down. All the controls here are the same. You've got your marker switcher there. You've got a few more warning lights at the top. Um, battery on, gyro warning. No, they're just in despair. They're just. Uh, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 12, 1, 2, 8. So you've got four more basically. Um, you have like fuel warnings, battery on. Uh, I think those are the differences, and this one, which is not in use, but looks a bit okay. That's fine. Uh, controls to the left look the same, although simplified. Cool. Anything else you want to point out in the rear seat? Um, not really, not that I can think of. Roger. Right, um, we'll sign off now. I hope that was useful, and we'll see you later. <laughs>